very kind of you, Slade, but I really don't need you to hold my hand. Hey, I'm only tagging along for more support. I used to bank here. Used to? Yeah, I took my overdraft elsewhere. <laughs> Listen, if you can get the loan, you can buy me lunch. Good morning, Miss Turner. Where's Mr. Spencer? I'm afraid he's busy. I'm Beth Stevens, the assistant manager. All your details have been passed on to me. Now, we did extend your overdraft last June, Miss Turner, but it seems that you've exceeded it again. Does it? Which does make the question of a loan. If you don't mind me saying so, you do seem to have something of an obsession with electronic equipment. I wouldn't call it that. This payment here, UCX Electronics, what sort of equipment is it exactly? I'm sorry. Hi-fis? PCs? It's my work, Miss Stevens. Bev, please. Mr. Spencer told me you were with the police. I am a science officer with the police, yes. But as it happens, Bev, I'm also exploring the effects of tachyon bombardment on the atomic substructure on my afternoons off, of course. Oh. And I really came here for a loan, not a lecture. So if you're not going to give it to me, why don't you tell me now so I can leave you and go and be a grown-up again? Resigning, Slade. What? You heard me. This whole thing is ridiculous. Scrimping and saving to buy advanced electronics I cannot even begin to afford. You didn't get the loan, then. What am I doing in the police department? I'm not a police officer. I'm a quantum physicist. Hey, don't put yourself down. I could be working in a university or any electronics company. Research, development. Who needs a bank, anyway? I hate banks. Shut up. Look, you go to university, all those... A scientist looking over your shoulder. How much longer do you think you're going to be able to keep your little secret a secret? What secret? You're good at this job, Holly. It suits you. You're virtually your own boss. You're respected. And underpaid. I mean, it's crazy. I don't even enjoy police work. I should never have started it in the first place. But that's it. I'm through. Frank. Put this guy in, will you, please? What's he done? Bank robbery. Attempted bank robbery. Failed bank robbery. You handle it. Sure. Thanks. Yes, I say. Maybe you could find the money somewhere else. Where, for example? Well, couldn't you get a grant or something? What about your family? Do you have any rich relatives? Are you serious? Well, if you need the money... Oh, that's wonderful. That's really, really wonderful. What do you want me to do? Look them up and murder them? Slade, Holly, Christian wants us. The report's just come through. A poisoning in a five-star restaurant. The food? I hardly think so, Slade. This is a world-class chef. And apparently there was a food inspector on the premises when it happened. Oh, what a coincidence. According to the report, cause of death was a dose of poison, KCN. Potassium cyanide, white crystals. Traces of it were found inside the victim's wine glass. Who was the victim? Her name was Mary Chandler. There's a photograph here just come through. Wait a minute, Chief. What is it, Turner? I know her, Mary Chandler. She's my aunt. Your aunt? My father's sister. Well, when did you last see her? Uh, uh, a year ago. My uncle Edward died of a heart attack and I saw her at the funeral. But not since then? No, Chief. Oh, well, obviously, this puts a different light on things. How do you mean? Well, I would have thought that was obvious, Slade. This is a high-profile murder in a top society restaurant and now, it seems, we have a personal involvement. But I told you I haven't seen her. Uh, do you want me to handle it, Chief? Oh, yes, Robson, that's a marvellous idea. Is it? Handing over a top-level murder investigation to a graduate trainee. Yeah. <laughs> Morris! Come in here. I'll handle this myself. Well, you and Morris? 
Well, do you have a problem with that? No, Chief. Look, it's just a question of impartiality. I would have said, as head of division, my position was very clear. Why Morris? Why not me? Oh, thank you, Slade. I'd almost prefer Robson. Chief? Get the car, Morris. We're leaving now. The key goes in the hole by the steering wheel. Grisham and Morris. Grisham's only effective when she's behind a desk. Yeah. And the desk and Morris have got about the same IQ. Oh, poor Aunt Mary. They might as well file her under unsolved now. Are you close to her? No, I hardly saw her. But she was my father's sister in the family. Yes. Yes, it's Holly Turner speaking. Who is this? Yeah, I know I'm kind of jumping the gun a bit, but I thought you ought to know. Are you saying my aunt named me in her will? That's right. Your joint beneficiary, you and some guy called Alex Morton, her partner. Uh, how much did she leave, exactly? <laughs> Cut into the chase, eh? Well, we won't know for a few weeks. But I can tell you this much. When Edward Chandler died a year ago, I handled that will. And he left her around two mil. Mil? Yeah. Give or take a few thou? Right. So it looks like you're going to be pretty rich. Does Alex Morton know anything about this? No, not yet. I haven't told him. But there is something you ought to know. Go on. Your aunt was about to change her will. She bailed me a couple of days ago. She was coming in tomorrow a.m. In what way was she going to change it? Well, she didn't say. But she makes a call and the next thing I know, she's dead. Maybe I should have just called the police. But you are the police, so I called you. So how does it feel? What? To be a millionaire? I don't know. I just want to find out who killed her, Slade. There's not much chance of that with Grisham and Morris on the case. Could always travel back. What? Go back. Time travel. See who did it. See who put the poison in the glass. Maybe we could even save her. No. Two million pounds, Holly. That's all the money you're going to need to perfect the machine. Don't you think you owe her? Transistor over there. My father put it in in the 50s. These circuits here, early 60s. The deflection coil. Uh, the deflection coil. And that's the answer. You got a spare? Yes. Every time I use the machine, another piece breaks, and that's another month's salary. Not anymore. <laughs> right. That should do it. What's the time? Five past eight. Let's go. Ah. Oops. Don't say a word, Slade. What have I done? Nothing. Must have been a power surge in the photon generator. Oh, is that bad? That's not good. It would have blown every fuse in the building. Damn! This old place is crazy. It's the main fuse. I'll get the bills from the electric. Do you know how many units they say we use? 27,000. You could light up a stadium with that. Well, can you fix it? I've got people stuck in the lift. I've got people in the dark. I can fix it, sure. Great. But what am I going to do? A football stadium. Right. I can 
business? Yep. This time I'll use a 50 kilowatt resistor circuit. That should do it. I shouldn't be doing this, Slade. Maybe the machine was trying to tell me something. Poor Aunt Mary. Surprise, anyway. Come in. You should have told me you were coming, dear. I've only got a minute. Who's this? Jeff Slater, a friend of mine. Hi. Pleased to meet you. Don't tell me you've finally got yourself a man. And what do you do, Biff? I'm with the police, and it's Jeff, actually. The police? Oh, is this uh, an official visit? No, no, no. We're just passing. You should have said. I was just on my way out. Lunch at Aramis. Three weeks to book a table. Four if you don't want to view the kitchen. Maybe we could join you. Oh, I'm afraid not, Cliff. It's business. But uh, we can meet for tea later on. Uh, I don't think that's going to be possible. Have you taken it, Mary? Oh, I didn't know we had guests. Uh, this is my niece, Holly, and her boyfriend. Is the car ready? It's outside. Of course it's outside. I just hope it's clean for once. I'll wait for you. in Barbados. Of course, I still miss Edward, but life goes on. And Alex does make me feel young again. And what do you do for him? I spoil him. Well, someone has to pay for all those designer suits. Anyway, I must dash. I'm sorry about this, Holly. Next time, call me first. <laughs> I'm Mary. Yes? Nothing. You were going to stop her going, weren't you? No. You could have done that, couldn't you? No, I keep on telling you, you can't, you can't change, change the, the past. past. I know, the first world time. You of all people should know that by now, Slade. So is that it? We're just going to stand here and watch her go to her death? There's nothing we can do. We can try. Or maybe you don't want to. What? Well, don't blame you. An hour from now, all this is going to be yours. If she dies. That's such a horrible thing to say, Slade. Well, then let's try and stop it. OK, we'll try. But it won't work. We'll see about that. <sighs> see you later, then. Enjoy the lunch. Don't get too far away. I'll call you if I want you. You know, Mary, I'm not your servant. But you are, Alex. That's just it. You are. It was the potassium cyanide in the white wine, so all we have to do is make sure she doesn't drink any wine. How do we do that? Well, you stay in the kitchen and make sure no one tampers with the bottles, and I will be in the restaurant. Your table, Mrs. Chapman. Robert. Thank you, madam. Yeah, Amanda. I'm not late, am I? No, we were early. <sighs> yes, of course you were. I hope the halibut's on today. Of course, Mrs. Chandler. Yes, we can.
Can I get you an aperitif? Not for the moment. I'm glad you agreed to come, Mary. I'm intrigued. I didn't even know the three of you knew each other. Would have been better for you if we hadn't. Maybe I'd better have that aperitif <coughs> after all. If you'll excuse me. Shall we leave the business until we've ordered? I take it business is what this is all about. Yes. Are you the manager? I am. Uh, I'm from the Department of Hygiene. We're running a series of spot checks on food preparation. Nobody told me. Of course not. I must say this surface leaves a lot to be desired. It's flour. I'm interested in your wine storage. Do you have a separate cellar? No, it's uh, kept back there. I do assure you, Miss... Uh... Kenwood. This is the Aramis restaurant. We maintain the highest standards. In that case, you'll have no objection to me staying while the lunch is being prepared. I will be making a full report. Some wine with a meal? I take it you'll join me. Mary, we didn't invite you here because we enjoy your company. Dear Ian, yes, I thought you'd be the first to speak your mind. We've invited you here to tell you these demands of yours have gone on long enough. And trust a dentist to spoil a nice lunch. Are you part of this conspiracy, Amanda? We shouldn't have paid you in the first place. We should have gone straight to the police. I would have thought the police were the last people you'd want to know about this. Waiter! Uh, yes, madam? Uh, I'd like a nice Chablis. Which one would you recommend? Uh, to be honest, madam, I wouldn't recommend any of them. <clears throat> I'm sorry? No, they're overpriced. What? What are you talking about? How about some mineral water? Well, if you haven't got any Chablis, what about the Puy Fumé? I'm sorry. Too dry. I'm not used to this kind of service. I'm only trying to help, madam. Then bring us a bottle of the Sancerre. You won't like it. I think we've had quite enough of your expertise, thank you. Bring the Sancerre. You say so, madam. <clears throat> Excuse me. Dirty. This place is really going downhill. Now. I snatched your aunt's wine glass. It's clean, but get me another one anyway. Food's all fine, and no one's been near the bottles. Good. Now you're getting the hang of this. Forget it, Slade. This is the last time. Sancerre. Sancerre. There we are. There's six of them. This one's definitely untouched. Look at let her drink it, are you? I choose the bottle. You choose the glass. I open it and pour. I'm there while she drinks. What could possibly go wrong? staring at? I'm not staring. Yes, you are. Could you please leave us alone? <clears throat> to the three of you. And to our long association. Excuse me. What? I ordered my wine ten minutes ago and I'm still what? waiting. What wine? The Grunhauser 94. Uh, look, I'm just decanting it, sir. Wait a minute. You're not the wine waiter. Look, could you sit down, please, sir, and I'll bring it to you. I'm going to see the manager. <laughs> Say, get the doctor. You did this. You. You. Let's get out of here. We don't know. She just collapsed. Is she dead? I think so. It had to be one of them. But how? You were there. This fat idiot got in my way for about 10 or 20 seconds and I couldn't see what was happening. And that's when she was poisoned? Yeah, must have been. She drank the wine and collapsed. And Grisham had that report. It was potassium cyanide in her wine glass. I don't understand. Why would anyone want to kill her? And what makes you think you're going to find the answer here? Oh, no. No, no. 
This is all wrong. This is completely illegal, Slade. This is your aunt's house, correct? Yes, I know that. Well, now it's yours. I still haven't told you what I heard at the table. It seems that your Aunt Mary wasn't just having lunch with three old friends. Go on. Well, she wasn't specific, but uh, I have a sneaking suspicion she was blackmailing them. What? Aunt Mary blackmailing? That's ridiculous. They were talking about some sort of demands. One of them, the woman, was threatening to go to the police. We shouldn't have paid you in the first place, she said. That's hardly my idea of a fun lunch. Yes, but you know perfectly well that she's a rich woman. Why would she need to blackmail anyone? And what possible hold could she have over anyone anyway? What did your uncle do? How did he make his money? Well, he was nothing special. An accountant. He must have had some very big clients. Yeah. Did he work from home? Yes, through here. It's his. Slade, he's been dead a year. They obviously didn't work then. isn't she? Robert Blake. Hmm, maybe that's it, Holly. They were all clients of your uncle's. You think he was fiddling their tax? That's what it looks like. And Mary had the files. Hayes, Carter and Blake. Let's see if we can find out a little bit more about them. Where? Well, if we pull them up on the computer at work, we can cross-reference them with the Inland Revenue. Never know. We can't go back to the office. Why not? It's Grisham's case. Don't worry. She won't even know we're there. Right, so that's five hours till we have to be back at the machine. It's ten past three now, so that means we're just coming out of that solicitor's office. I still can't get used to being in two places at the same time. Don't worry, I won't let it become a habit. Ten minutes to run these checks and then we're out of here. Let's hope you're right. We're not involved. We are involved. We were there when she died, remember? Well, why do I get the feeling this is another big mistake? Slade. Holly. What? Um, I... I've forgotten my... I've forgotten my... What's he forgotten? He's forgotten. <laughs> Hi. Don't tell me. There's been another murder. I think we should come back later. I don't think we should have come at all. We'll come back later. Turn up! Yes, Chief? I have to tell you, Turner, this is the most depressing day of my entire police career. Well, I told you you wouldn't enjoy working with Morris. I'm arresting you for the murder of your aunt. Morris? This morning, you told me that you hadn't seen your aunt for a year. Yes, Chief. But according to her partner... Alex Morton. You were actually at the house minutes before the lunch, so why did you lie to me? I was confused. <laughs> she was confused, Morris. You don't think it was a bit coincidental, turning up at the house on the very morning she was killed? I do, yes. What? You're right, it was a coincidence. 
I've spoken to the solicitor. Bradley Herman. I know about the will. Your aunt had divided her estate equally between you and Alex Morton. And she was about to change it. Maybe you don't know how she was going to change it. I've also spoken to the restaurant manager. Eduardo. Thank you, Morris. I've also spoken to the restaurant manager about this food inspector, a Miss Kenwood. It wasn't me. Then how do you explain this? What about it? This is the wine glass that poisoned Mary Chandler. There are two sets of fingerprints on it. Hers... ...and mine. Can I take that as an admission? <laughs> I wish I could help you, Turner, but I can't. The motive... ...the opportunity... ...you were there... Hang on, hang on, hang on. Hang on. This is ridiculous. You know, Holly Chief, she's the best science officer we've ever had. You can't do this. Is that everything? Yes. And the watch? No. Holly, you've got to. The cell's this way. Everything in my life went wrong the day I told you about the machine. Well, you wanted a time travel. To solve the crime, Slade. Not to prevent it. And certainly, certainly not to get accused of doing oh, it. Calm down. Just... Calm down. I've got less than four hours and I'm stuck in here and I haven't got the watch. You've got the clock? The watch neutralizes the machine. It breaks the loop of infinity. We're both stuck here without it. It's not that bad. <gasps> Could it be any worse? There's only three suspects. Three? The ones at the table. I could do it. Do what? Find the real killer and then get you out of here. You're kidding. Trust me. I'll be as quick as I can. <laughs> Hi. You got a light? You can't go in there. Right. What are you doing here? Mr. Blake, I'd like to talk to you about Mary Chandler. But you're the police. I've already told you people. But you haven't told us about your accounts. What? Edward Chandler was your accountant, wasn't he? Yes, but it was all above board. Really? You, Ian Carter and Amanda Hayes. Crooked accounts and Mary Chandler was threatening to shop the three of you. No, it wasn't like that. It's not true. Which one of you did it, Blake? Was it you who put the poison into a glass? No, I couldn't. Well, it must have been one of you. So which one? I don't know. No, don't talk to me. Talk to Amanda. The lunch was her idea. Go on. You're right. Mary was making demands from all of us. Amanda found out and suggested we all join together and then confront Mary in the restaurant. Confront her or kill her? I didn't kill her. I was completely shocked. So what are you in for then? What? I can't talk to you. I have to work out a way of getting out of here. Oh, it's always hard the first time. Me, I'm in and out so often, I've sort of got used to it. They shouldn't put that clock there, it's not fair. Time moves so slowly, doesn't it? Especially when you're doing time. Five to five. Hey, 
Where's my tea? I mean, they always bring tea. Thank you so much. I do hope you enjoyed. Thank you very much. Who is it for? It's for Mary. Chandler. Who are you? What do you want? I'm with the police, Miss Hayes. Seems you're making quite a bit of money out of murder. Murder fiction, yes. But the fact is I had no reason to kill Mary Chandler. Hardly knew her. Mary Chandler was blackmailing you. And I was under the impression that the lunch was your suggestion. My, you have been busy. I want the truth. It was potassium cyanide that killed her, wasn't it? How do you know that? I used it. In Death by Design. At my first novel, I recognise the symptoms. So? Where could someone like me get a poison like that? They don't hand it out at the local chemist. And... To my knowledge, they don't use it in dentistry either. <laughs> Not that Blake would have had the guts to kill a wasp with a rolled-up newspaper. So, that leaves Ian Carter. Who just happens to run his own chemical company. Mm. Don't tell me you didn't know. <sighs> yes, Mr Slade, we do store cyanide along with about another 500 dangerous substances. Could anyone have got in here and stolen some? Out of the question. I'll show you why. There's a storage here. Authorized staff have their own personal entry numbers with every entry logged on the central computer. The more lethal stuff is kept in here. Only three people have the combination. There you are. Potassium cyanide. Nobody could have got in here. Except you. You just walked straight in. Yes, Mr. Slade. If that's what you wanted to know, you should have asked me. You know Mary Chandler was seeking our financial support. That's how she would have put it. She was blackmailing you. She'd invested unwisely an office development somewhere in the north. She decided we'd make up the difference. And so you invited her to lunch? Not to kill her. To warn her off. Even if I had stolen that cyanide, how could I put it in her glass without the other two seeing me? Think about it. None of us could have done it without the others seeing. All three of you had a motive. Yes. But of course, we weren't the only ones. Suffer. Nearly seven o'clock. A bit time. I suppose you're hungry. I'm hungry. Forget it. Nikki, if I told you I had to be somewhere in one hour and 15 minutes, that it was a matter of life and death, would you believe me? Can I go there for you? No. No, no. Just out of interest. What would you say if I asked you to pretend I jumped you and escaped. It's an interesting moral dilemma. On one hand, of course, I'd like to help a friend, but on the other, of course, under section 17, paragraph 37B... That's what I thought you'd say. <laughs> Mary and me, we were fine. She was crazy about me. Did you know she was blackmailing Ian Carter and the others? Yeah, she'd lost a packet, some investment thing. Did she tell you she was just about to change her will? Yeah, it was me who persuaded her. You? There wasn't so much money anymore, so I told her to cut out the girl. Like I say, Mary would have done anything for me. Charming. 
Oh, one last thing. What? When we were here earlier, when you came down the stairs, you asked Mary if she'd taken it. What did you mean by that? Taken it? Hmm. Oh, yeah, I was talking about a letter. Just some letter she had to post. I guess now we'll never know what was in it. Thank you. That's what it's all about. Observation. That's the name of the game. Keep your eyes open, your mind alert, you get your promotion before you know it. Oh, I'll just pick up my car keys and see you out there, OK? OK, see you there. We might have got this wrong. What brilliant bit of deduction brings you to that conclusion, Robson? Well, it, it's more of a gut feeling. Didn't think that's where she'd hit you. I just want her found. I was just coming to tell you. What? I know who did it. I know who killed your aunt. Oh, that's great. That's really, really great. We've got 34 minutes. Is that enough time to persuade them? Do we talk or do we run? Run. Just a minute. Why don't you just talk English? That's where Turner lives. She's going home. We're not going to make it! <laughs> 
Relax. How long have we got? Uh, 14 minutes. We've got to get back. But how? At least things can't get any worse. Morris? I'm heading straight for the front of the building. You just make sure they don't double back. Right. What have we got here? We're all right. We're going to make it. Why is it that every time you say something like that, something horrible happens? Hey, I dealt with the dog, didn't I? <laughs> After a fashion. We can't just stay here. I know. If we do, we miss the deadline. We'll be stuck here for the rest of infinity. If we go in, Grisham will arrest us and we still won't get back to the machine in time. Just think of something. Three minutes. Move! That's your power car. They'll see us! No, they won't. Trust me. Where are they? You blew the power, remember? The other one stuck in the lift. you have gone too far. I'm arresting you, too. Wait a minute, Chief. What? He knows who killed Mary Chandler. Who really killed her? All right. But this had better be good. Alex Morton knew that Mary was having lunch with the three people that were blackmailing her, which gave him the perfect opportunity. To kill her? Yes. You see, Alex lied to me. It wasn't Holly being cut out of the will, it was him. And when he found that out, he was determined to stop it happening. It's not true. I couldn't have done it. I wasn't even in the restaurant. You didn't need to be. Mary had taken the poison before she left. You're wrong. Have you taken it, Mary? That's what you asked her when Holly and I were there. You told me you were talking about a letter. It takes a funny word when you're talking about a letter, isn't it? Have you remembered the letter? Have you... have you got the letter? But if you're talking about medicine, if you're talking about pill, have you taken it? And she had, hadn't she? There were no pills. When we saw them in the study, we thought they were her husband's, but since then I've checked. Nikki? Um, Mary Chandler had high blood pressure, Chief. She got these on prescription. Very simple. You just unscrewed one, emptied out the contents, and filled it with something else. And then you had to just drive to the restaurant and wait outside. But we found traces of poison in her wine glass. Alex Morton put the cyanide crystals in the glass after she was dead. Don't you see? She was dining with her three worst enemies, three perfect suspects. And he was waiting outside? All he had to do was wait in the lobby until he heard the noise. Then he ran in, and in all the confusion, he just slipped some cyanide crystals into the glass. You! Can we take that as a confession? Chief? Thanks for the lift, Nicky. Good luck. And uh, Nicky, I'm sorry I hit you. Don't worry, it was actually quite a light testicular blow. It just winded me. Hey, this is it.
What did he say? I'm not sure you want to know. Oh, come on, tell me. How much did you get? Five figures. Five? High five. But they were debts, Slade. That's what she left. Debts of five figures. All the money's gone. What? The office development. She was principal investor. That's why she was trying to blackmail Edward's old clients. There was nothing left. Are you going to stay? Stay? With the police. Oh, I don't know. Grisham was so embarrassed after the arrest, she gave me a one-off payment as compensation. <laughs> Same time I hit her for a raise. That's all right, then. Oh, I don't know. Oh, look, you're not going to lock yourself away in some tedious research job for the rest of your life, are you? Just think what you'd miss. What would I miss, Slade? Excitement. Adventure. Testicular blow. <laughs> I could do without all that. And you'd miss me? No, I would not. You would? I would not! You would! Go on, admit it. Go on. I see. Well, a bit. <laughs>